Wow, what a game. And Tottenham Hotspur were incredible. I think this is the best I've seen Tottenham Hotspur almost all season, since the start of the season. The best I've seen them about Madison, the best I've seen them about Van der Ven. And it's so hard to pick man of the match. I think it has to go to Son to, to assist. A goal was world class today. But Pedro Porro, what a player. What a player. I've been really impressed with Pedro Porro whenever I've watched him. I'm thinking, this guy, the ball's on him. The amount of times he's lofted a ball and played a Spurs player through. And I'm like, the passing on Pedro Porro, the technical ability. And today, he's doing it consistently. Pedro Porro's got to be in that conversation of most improved player. But I think he's up there for best right back this season. A doggy was fantastic as well. The way Spurs are using their fullbacks were fantastic. I thought Saar made a massive difference. Saar coming back in, he's an engine, he's a unit, he never gives up. I think Richarlison had a fantastic game. I think Ange managed this game well. He knew with Newcastle's physicality, maybe Son on the wing and Richarlison as the centre forward could work better. Um, I thought uh, Kulaveski did really well in the eight row. I thought Ben Davis was a rock at the back. And I think this is the best of since Spurs in a while because people forget Newcastle are a very good team. Newcastle are not at the best today. Newcastle were very leggy. But Newcastle obliterated United. They've given Arsenal a run for their money. Newcastle have obliterated Chelsea, some other top sides. They beat PSG early on in the season. Obviously, they've dropped off because of the injury situation going on at Newcastle. And they're, I think, managing three game, a game every three days it is tough for Newcastle. But the fact that Spurs, after they've had a lot of blips lately, just went and destroyed them. Wow. Now, I want to talk a fair bit about Pedro Porro in a second. Yeah, I just thought Pedro Porro was very, very good for Spurs. And I think with Spurs, they've lost a lot of games lately. They've been very Spursy lately. But whenever I watch Spurs, even when they lose, there was really big moments sort of versus West Ham and versus Aston Villa where they'd thrown it away because they hadn't taken their chances and they made silly mistakes. And you've got to think, they don't have Mickey van der Ven and they don't have Madison, who've been their two best players this season. And they could have probably beat in Newcastle 5-0. They were that good. And Pedro Porro, despite... We're going to talk about Son, we're going to talk about Odoki, but Pesto, Pedro Porro, Pesto Porro, let's call him, Pedro Porro stood out for me. 79 touches, which is brilliant. Four ground rules, one, three long balls completed, three crosses completed, three key passes, three tackles, one, one interception, one clearance, one assist. The technical ability on this guy, the IQ on this guy, and how much this guy has improved under Ange Postacoglu is absolutely insane. His passing, the amount of times I've just seen Porro produce this great pass and his teammates are through so many times. I remember when the Villa game, they ended up losing, but I was thinking, wow, Pedro Porro, wow. The season he's having, um, he's sometimes an inverted right back. He's sometimes a traditional right back. He seems to be able to do it all. But what stands out for me about Pedro Porro isn't just his creative ability, isn't it just the fact that he's been solid defensively. But I think he's been really good in terms of ball progression. He's really good in getting the ball up the pitch, his ability to invert a midfield. I think he's handled players like Anthony Gordon. He's handled players like Docker with Man City recently. But technically, he's great. He can progress the ball. He can defend. He can deal with difficult winners. The passing on him is pinpoint. I think, you know what? When I watch Trent, I'm like, wow, that's a brilliant pass. And Pedro Porro recently, his pass has been in that Trent bracket of like, that is a phenomenal pass. And him and Saar were brilliant today. A doggy was brilliant. Madison, not Madison, uh, Richardson was brilliant and Son was brilliant today. Um, and I would have almost given Poro man of the match. For me, he was really close to being man of the match. But I think, you know, it has to go to Son just because Son is just a special player. But uh, what I would say about Poro is he looked like a Barcelona player. You know that when Barcelona have those great technical players that come through the academy, that's what I saw today. And for me... He was one of the best players on the pitch, him and a doggy, because their positioning was so integral to Spurs' build-up. In progression, in build-up, in terms of their all-round play, he contributes so much. He's not just a right-back, this is build-up, the way they can progress. And look, Destiny or doggy, we're going to talk about him in a second. I think he's, what, 21 years of old. He's been having a fantastic season. I think someone said to me, actually, who, who do you think has been the best left-back this season? I thought, probably a doggy, actually. Luke Shaw's been injured, Robertson's been injured. And look at a doggy today, 90 minutes played, one goal, 64 touches, uh, eight recoveries, three passes into the final third, three ground just one, two tackles, two clearances. So involved. Spurs' fullbacks are so integral to the way they play. They're so involved in build-up in everything. And they were absolutely fantastic. And I'm glad a doggy got a first goal because he's a player that I really like. And as a rival, you know, I have to say I do really enjoy watching Spurs. And part of me... I think because I don't want Arsenal, City or Liverpool to win the league. Part of me is a little bit behind Spurs and Villa this season. 
Um, but I thought Adogi has been one of the most impressive fullbacks in the league this season as well. And if you look at the statistic from Poro, going back to Poro, assistants made debut. Poro, look at the company, Kieran Trippi and Trent Alexander Arnold, who are in that elite bracket of fullbacks. Poro is creeping in. And I saw this tweet here by Mr. Black, which I bookmarked, and he said, since joining Spurs, Poro has uh, averaged a goal or assist every 2.7 games. Trent has averaged one every 3.4 games. Like, Poro, look at this. Three three goals, eight assists of 30 games. He's moulding in. Pedro Poro could be a very good player. He's starting to get in that sort of Trent Trippier bracket when it comes to creativity. He's 24 years of age. He's starting to be entering his prime, but Ange Postacoglu is using this guy so, so well. Enough about Spurs' fullbacks. We will talk about Newcastle in a second. I want to talk about the Spurs' his attack. I want to just talk about Tottenham in general. Now, I think Tottenham in that first half were incredible. They were defensively solid. I think the only chance they conceded was that sort of header. And I think going forward, they looked unstoppable. And I thought Son on the wing was fantastic because there was um, someone saying not that long ago, oh, Son's finished as a winger. You know, he's too old. He's finished as a winger. Son's definitely not finished as a winger. He said that today. Um, I think what I was looking at Spurs and I was thinking they just need another goal to kill it off. There's been a lot of games where they've gone one nil up. They've had the chances to go 2 nil up and they didn't go 2 nil up. And you're like, oh. then they give up a lead and then they lose. And they've done that a lot recently um, where they've actually gone one nil up and they've given up that lead because they haven't taken their chances. And today they took their chances a lot better, which I think made the difference for Son, not Son for Spurs. And I think if Spurs take their chances, they can win games and they can score a lot. The thing about Spurs is even when they have lost games this season, I've looked at Spurs and I've been like, well, if you look at the chances they had, if you look at how they play, they still are convincing. The and project still looks convincing. And I think Son is just a different level of player at the moment. And I do want to talk about Son because he's played as a nine most of this season and he's poached and scored and made runs in behind and linked up with Madison well. He was now back on the left and he was playing as a creative winger. Not only can he score goals when he wants to score goals, he's one of the best players one-on-one. -on -one. If a player's one-on-one -on -one and you, you put money on them to finish, Son is one of the players you want there. Um, but as of today, he proved that he can provide a lot in terms of creativity. Um, and Spurs, you know, have pretty much held five losses in a row before today. But even in those five losses they had on the Ange where they dropped a lot of points, they looked good. They looked convincing. They're only three points off Arsenal and my camera is lagging. So hopefully we haven't just had a spike. Do apologise if he throws at all in this video. I've been getting Wi-Fi warnings. But Son, as you can see by his game numbers, his stats, wow. 81% pass accuracy, 54 touches. 25 passes completed, 13 passes into the final third. He won seven duels, five recoveries. He put in an absolute shift defensively. Four key passes, three dribbles completed, two big chances created, two assists, one goal. He got everything right today. And, and Son is just a level that not many players get to. This guy for Spurs for a long time, he had a bit of a poor season last year. He's always been incredible. When it won't rely the one, he's an incredible guy. He's a special talent. The, the ability to finish, to take on his man, to make the pass, to make things happen, the defensive work rate, the attitude of Son. He's one of those guys you could not fault. And Trippier, who I think has probably been the best right back in the league bar the last few games, but you can maybe ask you could maybe argue Poro's creeping in there, was schooled by Son today. And and Trippier's an unreal player, but Son caused him real issues. And that's why he was a man of the match. But I want to talk about a few other things. I think the only negative was maybe Romero could have got himself sent off when Spurs were in control. And Romero's a bit of a liability like that. Spurs are in control. They're doing so well. He's just absolutely mad. But I think Lowe's was good for Spurs today. I think that was the only negative. I actually wanted to talk about Saar. I felt like Saar made such a difference to that Spurs side today. I really did. I think he covers so much ground. I think technically he's very good. I think he's an all-round better player than Hoiberg and he has the athleticism to cover a lot of ground. Um, I thought that he did really well and I think Lacelso had been good and I was a bit questioning why maybe Andrew dropped Lacelso, but I thought Kulavesky did so well in that eight row. I thought Saar was great, the determination, the ability not to give up and athletically Newcastle were the best team in the league. In terms of ability to cover around work rate and athleticism, Newcastle were the best in the league. Man City the best technically, Newcastle the best athletically and I think actually Andrew got it right playing Saar because I think athletically his ability to cover ground, his ability to win duels, the quality he has, he doesn't just he doesn't get like crazy goals and assists, but he's a beast. He wins draws. He, he gets the ball a lot. He can carry the ball. He can progress the ball. He's a very underrated player that can add, has actually dominated games like today for Spurs. Works well with Basuma, passes it around. He was great, and I felt like he was the glue today. I felt like he was a big difference maker 
for Tottenham today. The stability he offered in the middle of the park, the balance that he offered, and he dealt with Joe Linton, he dealt with Bruno Guimaraes so, so, so well. So big props to him. The question is, right, could Spurs be in a title race? Liverpool will probably drop points when a lot of their players go to AFCON. Spurs do have, I think, Arsenal and, and Liverpool and City at home, and they're very good at home at the moment. They will have key players like Madison and Van der Ven back soon. I don't think Spurs have the depth to to win the league. And I think Spurs, just they do have that bit of bottle in them. But I think in terms of ability, in terms of exciting project, I think Spurs is up there at the very top. And I do want to give a shout out to Ben Davies, who I thought was incredible today. A player that gets a lot of stick, a player playing that position, I thought it was great today. I think, look, it, it, this could be the start of something brilliant for Spurs. And maybe they could go on a run. And we know on their day that Spurs can match all the top sides. Uh, but it's about consistency. And I think the reason Spurs are inconsistent is because of the injuries and they don't have the quality and depth to deal with those injuries. But they look phenomenal today. And just done a good job. And I'm going to wrap up the video here. And I apologise apologize for those lag spikes in this video. But every like 30 seconds, I keep getting a, a weird Wi-Fi thing come up saying it's not connecting well. So hopefully the video comes out clear. <laughs> 